Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMaker Cast. In this video, we're going to be covering triggers and introducing a design pattern called an observer pattern. We're going to be using a library to help us accomplish this, but first, if you're looking for the full source code of this video and many other projects, check out my Patreon site found in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and hit the notification bell to get notified of any upcoming videos. Now let's take a look at the little sample project that I've included. We really don't have much, we just have some simple objects like a mouse cursor and a few other random things. The first thing I want to cover is creating our very own trigger system. We can use these kind of systems to determine when something enters or exits a zone. An example of this is a video that I recently finished. Our player would enter a cave and then we added some audio effects to make it sound differently. When the player exited the cave, we then returned the effects back to normal. You can find a link to that video in the top right. Now to accomplish a trigger system like this in our small starter project, let's actually open up the object trigger and we're going to open up all the associated events. Inside the create event, you can see that we're just using a boolean to tell us whether or not this item has been triggered. We could expand this to also include on enter, on leave, and even a variable to tell us if we're inside, but this is actually a good starting point. Let's switch over to the step event and you can see right here, right at the very top, we're checking to see whether or not we have a target. If we don't have a target to search for, then we're just going to exit and there's no reason to run the rest of the code. You might have also noticed that we didn't declare this actual variable within the create event itself. The reason for this is on the actual object, the target variable is in what's called a variable definition. This means that if I open up my room and I click on one of the object triggers here, you can see in the inspector panel, we can assign a different target to each of our objects. I've already gone ahead and set the target for this one as the object mouse. You can set this to whatever you want to capture, but for now, we're just going to leave it as is. Let's close our room editor and switch back to the code, and we're going to check to see if we have a collision. The first thing we're going to do is store a reference of the collision inside a variable called instance. We're going to be using the instance place function. And that means it's going to take the X and Y position and also the target that we want to check for collisions with. This function will either return the instance ID or a special variable called no one if we didn't collide with anything. So first, let's check to ensure that we did collide with something. We can easily say if the instance does not equal no one, then we know that we have collided with our target. Now to check to see if this is our first time entering the zone, we can use our variable to tell us that. If triggered is set to false, this means that we haven't entered the zone before. So the first thing we want to do is set triggered to true. For now, let's also just use a simple debug message to print out that we've actually entered the trigger zone. Now on the opposite end, if we leave the trigger zone, we're not actually going to have any collision. So in the else statement here, we can determine if we left a trigger zone by checking to see if the trigger variable is set to true. If that variable is set to true, we know that we were at least in the zone once. The first thing we want to do is switch it back to false. And then just like before, let's just display a small message to our user. Now let's run our game and you can see if we hover over one of our zones in the output panel, we'll see it say on enter or on leave, depending if we're going in or out. The real nice thing about the system is it's being triggered once so we can run the function only once if needed. For example, if we switch back, we could call one of these functions we found on our object mouse. For now, let's actually call the random angle function. So anytime that we enter this trigger, we're going to call the random angle. If we run our game again and we enter the trigger zone, you can see the mouse angle is changing just as expected. But what if we wanted to capture multiple targets? Will we need to add more variable definitions? What if we want to keep track of everything or have different objects interact with each other? This is where the observer pattern comes into play. We can send a message out to our game and any object that is listening can pick it up and perform whatever action it needs to perform. Now for this, we're going to be using a library called Notification System. This library was created by Bubba Ganoush, and I've left a link in their GitHub profile and also a link to the library in the description below. When you download the starter project here, it's already included, so we can get started using it. Let's go back to the object trigger and create a new variable definition. We're trying to future-proof this code, so this hopefully will work down the road. 
let's call this variable definition broadcast message. Let's set the type to a string and let's also leave the default as empty. Now we'll switch back to the step event for the trigger and instead of just calling the target and the function that we want, we first are going to check to see if we have any message to broadcast. We can do this by testing the length of the broadcast message variable. If the broadcast message does have something in it, then it will be bigger than zero. Next, we're going to be calling a new function called broadcast and we're going to send in the broadcast message. This is a function that comes with a notification library, so if you're getting an error, make sure you have the notification library included. Now let's actually run our game and check what happens when we mouse over one of these triggers. In behind the scenes, it's actually broadcasting the message out to the entire game, but we don't have anything that's listening to pick it up. So before we can continue, let's actually close this and open up the room editor. Let's select one of our triggers and inside the expector, let's go down till we get to the variable definitions. And for the broadcast message, let's set the message to be entered. Now we'll open up the create event for the object mouse. And inside the create event, we're gonna create a new variable called receiver. This variable is gonna be set to a new struct or class, also called receiver. Just make sure that you use the capital version. Now this object needs to listen for messages, but it needs to know which message to listen for. We're simply going to call the receiver and an add function, and we'll pass in the broadcast message as entered. The second parameter is a callback function. This is what's gonna be ran whenever it hears that message. So in our case, let's actually run the random angle again. Now, if we run our game again, and we go over the trigger, you can see the first one doesn't do anything because we left it empty within our room editor. However, if we hover over the second one here, you can see that now our mouse cursor has a random angle. So, okay, we've made it back to where we were, but how is this easier? Well, now let's have something happen to these white squares over here. What we can do is we could copy this code to minimize our typing. And inside the white squares create event, we'll paste it in. Now, instead of calling the random angle because our object just doesn't have that function, let's use this function found in this unnamed script. So for now, we're going to change this to be a color change. Now, we'll run our game again, and we don't have any message on the first trigger that came up, but when we mouse onto the trigger zone underneath here, you can see that we're changing the mouse angle, and also our squares are changing colors. If we wanted to add a different trigger to the zone, we could easily just head over to the room editor, select the trigger in the variable definition, and let's add another one for message A. Now we'll go inside our object mouse again, and let's actually listen for this particular message. If it receives this message, let's change the random angle function call to a random scale. Let's run our game again, and the trigger at the bottom zone, you can see that we have the cursor change, and also our squares change color. But when we use the trigger, the very last one here, you can see that our scale is now also changing. This is the power of the observer pattern. It allows us to broadcast messages to our game and then have multiple instances listen for it and pick it up. Imagine creating a UI object that could handle all the health components, and anytime you need to update the health, you would just broadcast a message out, and that would be updated. Anyway, I hope you found the video useful. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for future videos. Don't forget to check out the Patreon site for more text, tutorials, and other goodies. And talking about Patreon, a special shout out to those in no particular order. Mika, Midnight, Sudu, Sean, Patrick, 39 Digits, Aldo, Jujub84, Victor, Helena, Game Maker Community, Matthew, and Emerald. Once again, thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions or want to see a specific topic on a tutorial, just hit me up in the comments.